630, we'll call the Mandan School Board October 21st meeting to order. First item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, everybody. Next item is uh, approval of the agenda. Just uh, a couple of quick just changes on the future meeting dates. Uh, the December 2nd policy and personnel is actually at the Brave Center rather than City Hall. And um, I think I'm going to throw in the November 13th Mandan High School open house in here as a meeting date because if more than half I show up, it was going to be considered a meeting because of uh, that piece of it. So I will throw that in there, too, in relation to it. So. Uh, Dr. Bitts, any changes from you guys? Anybody else have any changes? Could I get a motion to accept the revised schedule? All right, we have a motion. We have a second. Second. We have a second. Any further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, please call roll. Yes. 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 Yes, next item is public communications. Anybody in the audience wish to address the board? Anybody wish to address the board? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to the administrator's report, and we got some really good fun stuff coming up here. Uh, first thing, Red Trail Elementary, National Blue Ribbon School, Dr. Bitts. Yeah, I'd like to invite Mr. Steckler, the principal of Red Trail, to come up. Um, he'll introduce his team, and they'll say a few words. Um, being a Blue Ribbon School is a big deal. Um, less than 1% of the schools received this recognition. I think there were three of them in North Dakota, and I think there's almost 500 schools in North Dakota. It is a huge honor, um, and I'm just excited to welcome Red Trail, and I'll stop talking. All right. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, President Wolf, members of the board, thank you for inviting the Red, Sc Red Trail School community to the Mandan Board meeting tonight to be recognized as the 2024 National Blue Ribbon School of Excellence. When I reflect as a leader of the building, from my perspective, um, it summarizes in, in these thoughts with me. Expectations, accountability, and creating individual learning paths for all students, as well as maintaining a culture where students and staff can excel. So tonight, instead of me sitting here talking about the things we do, I want our staff to share that. And I want them to share it from a perspective of a teacher, a para, and a specialist. And so they are going to come up here, and they're going to share with you over the last 10 years what we've built. And when I say what we, it's us. It's all of us together and what we've built at Red Trail. So we're going to start off with Mrs. Lingen, and then we're going to move into Mrs. Darcy Dykema, Mrs. Jerry Carlson, and then Mr. Scott Streifel. They will share with you from their perspective on what they believe has given us that good path to where we're at in these last 10 years. Thank you. Welcome. Hello. My name is Lauren Lingen. I'm a kindergarten teacher at Red Trail, and I've been there since it opened 11 years ago. At Red Trail, we believe in a student-centered approach. We, as a staff, have high expectations for our students, and our goal is to help them achieve their goals through many different ways. We do this through small groups, through one-on-one -on -one conferencing. We do this with our behavior and academic interventionalists, and we also have specialty rooms that help them reach their goals, such as our STEM and innovation room and our sensory room to help students of all abilities and levels of learning. Our teachers meet weekly in our professional learning communities, or our PLCs. In our um, weekly PLCs, we discuss student growth, as well as ways we can help struggling students to succeed. We also meet our students where they're at, and we strive them to get where they need to be by the end of the year through whatever means are necessary, whether it is um, kinesthetically, musically, hands-on approach, or any different way that they need to learn. We also use that time as professionals to collaborate together to make sure that we're using um, effective teaching practices as what I might be doing in my room might work for some students, but I know that my co-teachers might have a different approach that I can learn from from my co-teachers as well. 
We also like to celebrate successes at Red Trail. We celebrate successes as a school, we celebrate our successes in our classroom, and we also celebrate successes with individual students. And we like, I know I love to send out remind messages and pictures sharing all of the successes with my families in my classroom. Um, this year we have even more to celebrate with our National Blue Ribbon Award. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Dear school board members, I want to take you back to a baseball movie made in 1982 <laughs> called Field of Dreams. The cliche from that movie was, if you build it, it will come. The movie was where Kevin Costner uh, decides to build a baseball field in a cornfield. And he's debating, he's analyzing, he's wondering all the work that needs to be done, the setup, people, the logistics, everything that's needed to be done to get this cornfield to turn into a baseball field. To be successful, that project, knowing his livelihood, was going to be in jeopardy, maybe, he wasn't sure. He believes it will be done and serve a purpose for the community. When I heard that we were recognized with this blue ribbon status at Red Trail, this thought immediately came to mind, really. It did, and I'm going to tell you why. The famous cornfield is Red Trail. The main character, Ray Kinsella, is Dave Steckler. <laughs> James Earl Jones saying to Ray, he will come, is Dr. Bitts saying <laughs> to Mr. Steckler, they will come. Okay, so follow with me. Here we go. Mr. Steckler built Red Trail internally from scratch. Took on an outwardly overwhelming, incredible task. Went the distance, has been with the school from its beginnings, and has seen his brain work become reality. His staff stays with him year after year. I've been here for 11 years. And it shows dedication and loyalty to him. His vision, his expectations set forth for Red Trail. I wouldn't be working for a leader whose vision I don't believe in or want to be a part of. Believe it and they will come. It all starts with a driven leader, and that means good leadership. So, our Red Trail staff believes and stresses the words of our pledge, respect, responsibility, and safety throughout our day. We know these words will motivate our students to become life-learning, self-sufficient, problem-solving, successful adults. And that's what we strive to do for our students. We believe in a positive, caring, student-centered learning environment. We engage with our students and meet them on their level. We focus on individual needs for all students. A clear and shared focus within each department comes together to make Red Trail a blue ribbon school. Every department knows their part they play, and together our school is very cohesive. Our leaders lead by example. The focus is on achieving a shared goal. Our students are number one. We understand our roles and how to achieve our school's mission. I shared what I, why I'm so proud to work at Red Trail. So now I wanted to share with you, I walked around and I talked to my fellow colleagues and I asked them, why do you come, why do you keep coming back to Red Trail year after year? What brings you back to our school? And I want to share with you the responses that they gave me. The kids, the people I work with, the support I receive from staff and my coworkers. Red Trail is like a second family to me. The people are helpful and friendly. We work as a team, a positive culture. This is a happy place. We have a camaraderie, fun, relationships with my students. My school family, my students are in my life, and I am in theirs. The positive energy through the halls and all the smiles.
Red Trail is truly an amazing school. 11 years of existence and being awarded this prestigious federally recognized award. So with the logistics of running a school combined with the people and the outstanding support of an encouraging community, I hope you see why we were a well worthy recipient of a 2024 National Blue Ribbon School. Thank you for your support and believing in what we do at Red Trail. Red Trail was recognized federally and by all of you. And we as a school are proud and excited to represent Mandan Public Schools. Let's go blazing more new and exciting trails at Red Trail. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. I'm Jerry Carlson, and you're going to hear my perspective as the instructional coach. And you're going to hear a lot of the same things that the others have shared. But as an instructional coach, I have the unique privilege of working closely with all the classroom teachers and the students and seeing firsthand the academic strengths that they bring to Red Trail. I believe these strengths are a contributing factor to why we have achieved the honor of becoming a National Blue Ribbon School. And some of the key um, strengths I have had the opportunity to observe in the classrooms or throughout the classrooms are as follows. Commitment to students. The teachers put the students first, differentiating lessons and meeting their needs and ensuring they feel supported. Collaboration. The teachers work together, share resources, and offer each other feedback, when, which creates a very positive environment where everyone can thrive. This collaboration promotes a positive learning experience for all the students at Red Trail. Data-driven instruction. The teachers use data to guide their teaching strat practices. Analyzing the student data, once again, allows them to differentiate instruction to help all the students be successful. High expectations for students. The teachers believe in every student's ability to succeed and challenge them to reach their full potential, no matter their background or their skills. Professional growth. The teachers are willing to learn new strategies, participate in professional development, and implement innovative ideas to keep their teaching practice fresh and effective. These strengths, along with their dedication and hard work, have made a real impact on the students' success and growth at Red Trail and the foundation of our achievement and the reason we've earned the National Blue Ribbon Honor. However, none of this would have been possible without standing leadership of our principal. Mr. Steckler sets high expectations for students and staff and continually finds creative ways to provide us with the necessary resources needed to be successful. He listens to the staff concerns and ensures we will feel heard and supported. This combination of solid leadership and support has played a vital role in creating the thriving, collaborative, and high achieving culture that has led to the prestigious, this prestigious award. We will continue building on this momentum to ensure even greater success in the future. Thank you. Welcome. Hello, Scott Streifel, and I get to teach fourth graders. I was so tempted to come up here and just say ditto, but I was told not to. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I am half kidding, but really, we're going to say a lot of the same things, and I think that's just because we work so well together. But from my perspective, um, when we were informed that we had the honor of being a Blue Ribbon School, I was really excited to tell the people close to me all about it. When family and friends asked me what we did this, uh, to earn this award, I must not have done a very good job explaining because... They would say to me, oh, so you had great test scores? And that's how it came out, but in my mind, that was not at all close. Um, we've always been really proud of our students' test scores, and that's something we use to measure learning. But that's just a product of the things we do at Red Trail. I believe our success comes from the three areas that I've heard Mr. Steckler preach day in and day out for the 11 years since we've been open. Those three areas are relationships. Relationships and relationships. <laughs> if I had four and five, you'd probably guess what they are. I had originally written down collaboration, high expectations, because those truly are areas that we spend a lot of time and energy on, and they really are important to our success. However, relationships are the backbone of Red Trail. Each year, we come back in August, and our principal says, other than routines, I don't want you teaching anything. Just build relationships with the kids, get to know them, enjoy them. 
but we don't stop building those relationships after the first two weeks. That's something that we continuously do throughout the year. My favorite day of the week in school week is Thursdays. A few years back, we were given permission to wear sweatpants, and I was really thrilled about this. <laughs> the thought behind this was to literally get comfortable and work on building those relationships with the kids. So on Thursdays, we sit down in a circle to start the day like we do most days, but we take extra time to talk about anything but academics. I knew that I loved this, but I didn't realize how much my students enjoyed this until one day we had a field trip planned for a Thursday morning, and my kids immediately asked, what about our sweats talk? You would think going on a field trip would have washed away all thoughts about what we do in school, but they truly enjoyed getting to know each other more, sharing about themselves, and visiting about things we normally don't spend time on, like, would you rather be able to whisper or yell the rest of your life, or what kind of animal would you like to ride to school? And we have more serious topics like internet safety or a time when you embarrassed yourself and how you handled that. This brings me back to what one of my coworkers often reminds me. Students don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So having a culture where students feel comfortable coming to school is where that begins. This doesn't just happen. Having a culture that fosters relationships takes work. And people that put in the work are the students, the paras, administrators, teachers, cooks, custodians, volunteers, parents, and really the whole community. When we were about to open 11 years ago, I remember wondering, how is this going to all work? We have students coming from five different schools, and we have teachers coming from different towns, let alone different schools. They're all going to have different expectations and different things they believe in. But in the end, it didn't matter because we built the positive culture. We did the work. We built those relationships. And that's why I believe that we're a Blue Ribbon School. Thank you. Mr. Steckler, got anything to add on the end here? I mean, these guys have been breaking you up, so. Yeah, well, I, I should have, I actually should have proofread those uh, speeches. I, I told them, I said, hey, just put in words what you want to do and um, speak from the heart. And that's where they're at. And, and our staff is, um, you know, I, I can't tell you how proud I am of them. You know, we, I push them and I push them and I push them. And they just keep thriving, and they keep doing great things. And I just, I, I love them all. They, they're just a special group of people. So thank you. And you can tell you guys are all family over there. I mean, you can feel that by just based on your conversations. Congratulations to everyone of you. You know, you guys have done so well taking care of our best asset. It's our kids. So thank you. Thank you. And I think that's what it is. Yeah, let's stand up. And Dave, pass that on to the rest of the teachers, too. All right. Uh, Dr. Bitts, anything you want to add on that before we move on? No, just uh, just want to tell them how proud I am of the work they've done and how well they're doing at Red Trail. And Dr. Redderath and I go up and visit, and you can just feel um, what a great building it is when you walk in. Your, your culture is, it just permeates throughout the building. Congratulations. Just very proud of you. Yep. Thank you all very much for your hard work. Greatly appreciated. Heck of an honor. All right, moving on, we'll go to the update on the Madden High School construction. Dr. We Bates. are getting there. I'm starting to <laughs> <laughs> I visited the day, and it is really starting to look good and feel complete. A um, couple of things. Um, last week, you know, we went virtual for three days, and we were really able to get a lot of things done. Never as much as you want, but you've seen a lot of progress. Uh, the kitchen serving lines, which we had temporary equipment in, that's now permanent. That equipment is in. We were able to seal two-thirds of the commons floor, which we weren't able to do before. Um, the lights, uh, right when you first walk in, and the sprinklers, um, that was all able to be installed. So it was always so dark when you walked in. Now you can light, at least when you walk in. It looks good. Um, the large poles in the commons are all wrapped, and the lights are installed on them. The glass wall from the commons that leads into the gym, the frame is in. I'm, I'm hoping by the end of the week, if not earlier, that whole glass wall is in. So you can see all the way through. It just looks really good. Um, the gym floor is done. They're sanding it today. They're going to start painting it tomorrow. We're still on schedule to uh, open that up. Uh, first basketball practice is November 25th, and I think we're going to hit that. Um, practice or game? First practice. The first game is December 6th. Um, we're working on our, that's going to be a fun night. Um, Starian's doing some things and we're going to, it's going to be a 
zoo. So uh, in a good way, I think it's going to, we want to welcome people into our building and it's going to gonna feel good. But um, Jim is in a good place. I think our shops, we're going to move into the welding shop starting Thursday. Um, we had said October 31st, I think we're going to hit that, maybe miss it by a day or two with all the other shops. But um, then we'll be in everything other than the auditorium. So, And that's still sometime in 2025. We just haven't put a lot of people working in there just trying to get everything else done. So it's starting to look good and feel good. Even the outside is starting to shape up a little bit too. Yeah, I, well, I drove around it. I wasn't been in lately, but the whole outside seems to be pretty close to being done. Yeah. So it looks good. Any questions, comments, Dr. Bits on that one? All right, well, let's move on to the Men in High School open house. Let's well, just that's the next about item. <laughs> um, and I think what we've got planned is 4 o'clock on Wednesday, November 13th, we will have an open house. Weather permitting, we'll do it out in our commons, and we'll have a few speakers, but we'll keep it short. We'll have the chamber come over, we'll cut a ribbon, and then we'd like to welcome our community into our school. Um, like I say, the auditorium won't be ready, but I think we're going to have the balcony opened up where they can go in and at least kind of get an idea of what that's going to look like when that opens up next semester. Um, excited for our open house. Um, we we'll have a meeting tomorrow to start planning that, and i um, looking forward to welcoming people to Mandan High School. All right. So put that on your calendar, November 13th. Any questions on that? Okay, seeing none, we'll go on to the School Board Association Annual Convention. Correct. Um, have just want to just want to confirm. I have uh, Jake is registered for Thursday. Amy, you're registered for Thursday and Friday. Uh, Mr. Peters, Thursday and Friday, and Lori, you're just there on Friday. So um, I'll look for you there and save you a seat there, and hopefully you have a great convention. All right. Sounds good. Excuse me, Amy, is that the Civic Center? Uh, no, the, the Bismarck Hotel, I believe. Yeah. No, it's at the Bismarck Hotel. All right, uh, superintendent evaluations due back by October 28th. You'll see the form, I think, is going to get sent out to us, right? Right. The form is in your packet, but uh, Amy will send that out to you tomorrow. It's a pretty simple form. It matches my job description. And if you could get that completed and return that to her by Friday uh, the 28th, that would be great. That gives her a week to put it together. And then, just so you know, when you send it to her, I don't get to see it. So if there's four satisfactories, three unsatisfactories, I don't know who said that. So you can be honest. And yep. and normally what we do once we get that in, then I'll, me and Mr. Horn or myself, we'll meet with Dr. Bits ahead of time before we kind of go over it a little bit, if there's anything on there. That right, then we'll discuss it at a public meeting as well. All right. Anything else? Any questions on that? Just make sure you try to get it in, and if we don't have anything by uh, Fridays, you probably want to send everybody an email and say, hey, get this done. Moving on then to the consent agenda, review and consider approval of previous board minutes from October 7, 2024, review and consider approval of August 2024 expenditure report, review and consider approval of August 2024 expenditure report, revenue report, and the bills. I said expenditure twice. Accept uh, student achievement minutes from September 23rd, 2024, and accept the Heart River CTE board minutes from October 14th, 2024. Uh, could I get a motion to accept the consent agenda? So moved. And a second, please. Second. And a second. We have a motion and a second. Please call roll. Yes. 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 Yes, uh, we have no unfinished business, so we'll move into the new business. The first item on new business, review and consider approval, the first reading of the following policies. Um, we're gonna just going to, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Redderath so we can go through all of them. We have ABDA, website accessibility for people with disabilities, ABDA, dash BR1, website accessibility complaints, ABDA, a-E2 website accessibility statement, JCDAE weapons, IDDF education of special education students, IGA education of pregnant and parenting student, IGA-E section 504 eligibility forms. 
Dr. Ritter, I think. Yes, a thank you. Yes, they are a mouthful. And these are all, they're not the ones that we are slated to review in our strategic plan this year. These are all ones that came recommended from the North Dakota School Boards every year, recommends updating and addition of certain policies. So the first one, the website accessibility for people with disabilities is a new form for us or a new policy for us. We took it from their template. It's gone through the first reading at Policy and Personnel um, with just the minor changes of adding Manda and Public Schools. And I can keep going through these and people just keep going. Just stop me if you have somebody's questions. Got, yeah, I was going to say, if somebody's got a question, just chime in. Okay. Yep. And the next one is a companion piece to that. It's the complaint form. And the only thing that we added to it was on number four at the bottom, just that we would maintain a complaint form document for the current school year. And then the next one is the website accessibility statement. And we just mm -hmm. updated it to reflect Mandan Public Schools but no other further changes were to that one. And all three of those were new to us. The next one on here is weapons. This is a current policy for us that we had to make some changes to, very minor ones. We struck that first sentence out at the beginning of it, and it should have been in green, but it's not on yours. About midway through, it says the district must refer any student who possesses a firearm on school property or a school function that we must uh, refer them to the criminal justice system. That is an additional phrase that was put in there that was recommended by school boards that we didn't have before in there. So that would be the change there. Um, the next one, the special education programs, uh, we modified the first paragraph a bit uh, with eligibility, just being a little bit more clear in the process. And then that second paragraph uh, with the addition of the f Section 504 is new, and that's what we added based on the school board's recommendation for that to reflect um, 504 as well as IDEA. Can I ask you a question about yeah. the one that was stuck in the middle here when I read it? It says, for students eligible for services under IDEA, the district will follow procedures for identification, evaluation, and delivery of service to children with disabilities. It kind of leaves me hanging. What procedures? I'm just curious. I mean, so then you go and you talk about the ID 2004 and the Department of Public Instruction. Is it procedures from there, or is it Yeah, I can put the legal reference in there for IDEA evaluation procedures. I think that would just make it clearer. So yep. if anybody's reading through it, they would know where to go. Because yep. it kind of left me wondering which procedures you're talking about here is. Yeah, we can we can cite um, both the IDEA law and then our Morton Sue special ed procedures as well. Does that make sense to everybody? Because I, I just when I read it, I was like, okay, now what are we going here? I mean, yep. if I'm somebody on the outside looking in, they have no idea. And I think especially now that we added Section 504 to this policy that we didn't have before, that clarity is more important since we're we're touching on both. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Anything else on that one? Okay. The next one is a new policy. It is, and I apologize, it was uh, labeled wrong on the agenda. Amy actually caught it and I told her it wasn't wrong and it was, so that was my fault. It should be FDD um, instead of IGA. The Education of Pregnant and Parenting Students is a new policy. Um, had some minor tweaks to it, but this is one that we're recommended to have from school boards as well. So what's the right one here? It should be labeled FDD and not IGA. Is it still FDD-E for the second one too then? Nope, that one's correct. That's IGA-E-E. -E. So any questions on this one? And then the last one, we just, we have a IGA is actually our Section 504 policy, and we needed to have an eligibility form as part of that policy. And so that's the addition of this. We did not have that form in policy. We currently use this, and but we just didn't have it in formal policy. Anything else? Yep, that would be it. Anybody have any questions on any of these? And I just want to make sure I got it right. The IDDF should be FDD. Yep. Yeah. No, um, IGA, the Education of Pregnant and Parenting Students, should be FDD. Okay. I, Lots I'm of letters. Lost today. Lots <laughs> of letters. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? What are the wishes, uh, considering also that change, though, that we had talked about? Yep, I will add that in. For the wishes of the board. I'd move to approve. Uh, 
the review and the first reading of that policy with the with the change. With the change of and and the change of uh, including that uh, procedures. Yep. Is that included in your motion? It is. Okay. I'll take your second. I'll, I'll second that. <laughs> All right. Any further discussions? Thank you for clarifying it. I just want to make sure we get the motion what we need in this one. Anything else? Seeing none, please call roll. Yes. 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 Uh, next item on the agenda, review and consider partnership agreement with Dakota Community Bank for Amanda and High School Auditorium naming rights. Dr. Bitts. Yeah, Dakota Community Bank has been a great partner of ours for a number of years. Um, if you remember in the old man in high school, they had a couple of scoreboards and a scores table that they bought for us. Um, we moved the scoreboards over to the auxiliary gym. Uh, the scores table is in the auxiliary gym as well. Um, we couldn't use it in the new gym because it was about an inch and a quarter too big, and we wouldn't have been able to host regional volleyball tournaments or volleyball tournaments because it would have hung down onto the floor. So we put the video board that they bought out into the commons area, and we, we just wrapped that. And then they also wanted to sponsor the auditorium. Um, we've been meeting once we passed the bond issue or our community passed the bond issue uh, part of our our part of what we said we were going to do is try to get uh, public private partnerships where people can come in and we sold naming rights to several different parts of the school um, Dakota Community Bank would like to sponsor our auditorium it was the they met our, or they agreed to the price that we were asking. Um, so it will be Dakota Community Bank Auditorium. Um, they will give us $400,000. Um, we've been able to raise almost $4 million from our community, which is really helping us. Um, inflation uh, and was hard to deal with while we're building the high school. And these partnerships have been instrumental in us being able to build a beautiful high school and stay on budget and not raise taxes any more than we said we were going to. Um, this agreement is for 30 years. And it, it because they gave us those scoreboards, we just wrapped it all into one sponsorship agreement and um, excited to partner with Dakota Community Bank. And I can answer any questions that you have. All right, anybody got questions? Go ahead. Um, yeah, well, we've talked about it. I, we'll see how it actually turns out. But up top in the balcony, there'll be a couple of vestibules. So when you open the door, you don't walk into a, you don't let a bunch of light into the, so there'll be a couple of back, backlit signs that say Dakota Community Bank Auditorium. Then there'll also be uh, signage out in the auditorium directing people or letting people know that this is the Dakota Community Bank Auditorium. Correct. Yes. No, we're excited. They've been a great partner for us for a number of years, and we're excited to expand and continue that partnership. All right. Any other questions? Otherwise, I got one more yet. Um, on page one there, in relation to it, it talks about MPS agrees not to sell or display any advertising to any financial institutions other than Dakota Community Bank. What does that all cover and not cover? Because, you know, we got Star M Bank in there, so. Correct. I'm just trying to make sure that we've got. That is the video board in the commons. Um, we do have that out there. And let's say we're having a basketball game and Beck or Midco is broadcasting it. We're going to be able to play that out in the commons area. Um, what we told them is we won't sell any advertisements to another financial institution. But if Midco or Beck or who's ever broadcasting the game is showing a commercial to another thing, we're not we're that that is acceptable we just can't sell any adver and we're not planning to sell any advertisement on that board period but we can't just on that video board okay, so that that paragraph goes with the paragraph no right and before. and uh, dale Palkey was great but he said I, I i purchased that board and i don't want my competitors and i get that that's totally understand very fair and reasonable okay. any other questions what are the wishes of the board on this one I'll move to approve. Okay, we have a motion to approve. We have a second. I'll second. We have a second. Any further discussion, comments, questions? Kind of talked about them before the motion, but please call roll. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Polky and Dakota Community Bank, for your great donation. We appreciate working with you. Next item on the agenda, review and consider approval of the 2425 contract for work-based learning coordinator. Dr. Ritterath. Yes, as part of the Heart River CTE Center, we got a $50,000 grant from the state uh, to start a work-based learning program within CTE that is one of the three pillars of CTE they have the curriculum pieces they have their CTSOs which is their student organizations and then work-based learning is really that third pillar of any true CTE program especially any center so we're excited to have Paige Jensen take on that role for us and really her like it sounds um, she'll be working with local community um, businesses to get our students out on job sites so our health career students are able to get out into dental offices and PT offices into the hospital and doing actual work um, in their fields that they're interested in same with welding and tech and engineering and marketing and all those different programs getting them out into the community to really apply those skills and experience those occupations so we're excited to bring Paige on um, she is a former Mandan grad. I believe she was part of the Amundsen basketball um, program and, and has is excited to be back in Mandan. All right. Questions? I have a question. Is this, will this be, uh, uh, since it's, will she be working with the other communities also? This one will be specific to Mandan. The $50,000 grant, um, even though it was part of Heart River, was specific for Mandan. Um, New Salem also received one, so they have a work-based learning coordinator out in New Salem as well. But this one was school-specific, so she will work pr with Mandan students. Okay. You don't know offhand if it's – is this a yearly uh, uh, grant that uh... – it is, and in talking, though, with uh, the state, with CT, they don't foresee this going away. They, they look at it as pretty stable money. Whether it stays as a grant or gets rolled into one of our CT programs for reimbursement, that may happen. Like, we have certain programs right now that get reimbursed at 40% because they're part of the center. That may eventually happen with this work-based learning, but because it's a requirement of of CT to have that work-based learning. They don't foresee that money um, going anywhere for the time being. Okay, thank you. All right, any other questions? Seeing none, what are the wishes of the board? I would move that we approve this contract for our work-based learning coordinator. All right, we have a motion. We have a second? A second. We have a second. Any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, please call roll. Yes. 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 Next item on the agenda is future meeting dates, October 28th, Student Achievement, 5 o'clock at the Brave Center, October 28th, also Facility and Finance, 5 o'clock at the Brave Center, November 4th, Regular School Board, 5.30 p.m., City Hall, November 13th will be the Mandan High School Open House, November 18th, regular school board, 5.30 p.m. at the City Hall. November 19th, legislative roundtable, 6.30 p.m. at the Mandan High School. And December 2nd, policy and personnel at 5 o'clock at the Brave Center. Any other meetings that the board should be aware of? Seeing none, uh, meeting adjourned. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>